What's going on guys? GeoSnow right here. So in today's video, we're going to discuss about how to design your iOS application in Xcode, how to make a beautiful interface for your application. And then we're going to go in the next videos to code that application up. You probably know the design part of your application is very, very important because if you have a, I don't know, a not that great design of your app, nobody will use it. So, um, we're going to discuss that and also we're going to discuss about what Apple wants from an iOS developer from the design department. So um, also if you don't know, uh, if you don't have the basics of the Xcode on how to build your first application, I have made a video that you can find in here in the Xcode tutorials playlist. And yes, we're going to have more Xcode programming videos in the future. Xcode is the um, studio app, is the tool set application that Apple puts at disposal of the uh, developer to create iOS apps for the Mac or for the iOS, of course. So um, let's get straight into it. We're going to open uh, Xcode and we're going to create a new application. To do that, we're going to create a new Xcode project in here. Click single view application, of course, and we're going to name it, mm, let me name it, lock me. It's going to be a password related application. We don't really care. We're going to select language Objective C. Um, you have two options in here. We discussed about them in the previous video available in the description for the basics, but I'm I'm actually uh, biasing towards Objective C because if you're actually selecting this language, you're going to be able to learn it and you're going to be able to make Cydia tweaks later as Cydia tweaks use Objective C. I'm going to click next and save your thing. It asks me where to save it. I'm going to save it on desktop. It created the uh, folder in there. And we have this, this is the interface of Xcode. If you're not familiar with this interface and you want some more basic uh, tutorial, you're going to have it in the description. As I said, this video in here explains it all. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and here. As I said, I'm going to recap it for those of you who missed that video. You have here on the left, the uh, main components of your um, project. That being the M files containing your code, the H file containing headers, and the uh, storyboards and folders like assets. So in assets, we're going to put or or uh, or all the graphics we're going to create for the application. So let's make something for this application. In the storyboard, it contains the actual view controller, the actual uh, screen the user will see when they open the application. You can also say. Um, you can also create a launch screen storyboard, which is in here. It's already created if you don't want the application to open with a white screen. Now, the application only has the battery on the top, which means it has nothing on it. We do not like white applications. And in this video, we're discussing about designing your Xcode application. So you can, of course, use Sketch, but I'm going to get into that application later. Today, I'm going to show you how to do a simple yet beautiful design for your Xcode application just with some uh, basic Photoshop skills. Let me show you. So at first we want a background for this application because it looks ugly if it's white. I'm going to open Photoshop and I'm going to have a, a couple of assets in here, a couple of resources if you will. A wallpaper that I'm going to be using and I have a logo that I created, a pretty basic logo with a padlock against some green um, background. One is square as we needed for the uh, logo creation and this one will be in app. So. I'm going to open this wallpaper in Photoshop and we're going to do some modifications to it. By the way, uh, the application's uh, wallpaper, this one in here, I have taken it from a website with iOS uh, devices, wallpapers, so I do not know what's the license for it. So I cannot put it in the description, sorry. Uh, but you can find it, of course, on Google if you search for iOS devices, uh, wallpapers. Anyways. If you're a developer and you want to also do design for your application, you don't have a team to do that for you, you have to have a pretty cool uh, Photoshop skills. But for this uh, tutorial, we're going, we're going to only use a couple of them, which are beginner's uh, skills. We're going to go here to filter. We cannot use this application's uh, wallpaper as it is, because it's a little bit too lighty for me. So I'm going to go to filter and apply a little bit of blur, Gaussian blur in here. Well, um, it doesn't look that good. Maybe like 
this. Ah, it's okay. I'm going to select this. I'm, I don't want to spend a lot of time with the wallpaper itself. Then I'm going to drag this icon that I have created, which will be the main icon of the application, because we're designing now the main screen the user is going to see when they're opening the application with the buttons and so on. I'm going to resize it. I'm actually uh, grabbing it with the mouse and pressing shift in order to make sure it uh, actually resizes evenly. Okay, so we have the logo and I'm going to position it up here. Of course, we're going to place it, but it doesn't look well, is it? It's not going to be very appealing, although it's better than a white screen. So what we're going to do is to go to select all, and we're going to press this little button in here that is going to align it. It's going to perfectly align it at the center. Then, uh, I still don't like that icon. So what I'm going to do uh, is to make sure it's not selected anything in here, deselect, and we're going to select this icon, go to opacity, and do this. Mm -mm -mm. It already looks better, is it? Alrighty, so we're going to save this file. Of course, we're going to use GP, uh, GPG or um, GPAG, depending on how the format is here. Yes, GPAG, because it's going to be much more cleaner. I'm going to use this, maximum quality, click OK, and you have the wallpaper, the main wallpaper of your application with just a couple of steps. Then how we import this into Xcode. This is the important part. Well, as a beginner, you probably don't know Xcode very well, but it has a couple of objects in here. And if you're familiar with uh, Visual Studio on Windows, it also has that kind of things. Uh, pre-made components like buttons, progress bars, switches, and so on. There is something called an image uh, view, which you're going to grab, drop it in here on the application, and resize it evenly to actually fill the entire space of the application, including the battery. I'm going to do this. But as you can see, we did it, of course. And here, starting with uh, Xcode 8, you have this little viewer in here in which you can select various screen sizes. At first, we need to import that image we created in order to have it in here. Go to assets.xkassets, and we're going to take the wallpaper, put it in here, and we're going to fill out the 2x and 3x because it's required for retina displays. Uh, either way is going to use the 1x thing, but it's going to be very blurry. If, if you have a better quality version of your image, use that. But because we saved it with Photoshop in the maximum quality, this is going to be pretty sharp, I suppose. Going to main storyboard in here, we need to click this uh, UI image view and go to image proper property in here. Click wallpaper, and as you can see, it looks pretty damn cool. So. Uh, the, the only problem is that this is the screen of the iPhone 7, the iPhone 6, the iPhone 6s, but what if the screen is smaller or bigger? If we go with a uh, 7 Plus, for example, oops, as you can see, the image is no longer evenly uh, aligned. If we go with a smaller device, the image gets cropped and so on. So it only looks good on the iPhone 6, 7 and so on. How do we fix that? We're going to use what Apple calls the constraints. So we're going to click the, um, the view controller in here and select the image view. Go to this triangle thing in here and reset to suggested constraints. This will add the, um, the basic constraints that are going to, to be used for interpreting the uh, constraints engine is going to interpret how we um, how we want the application to look like. So now that we inserted this constraints, which means that it's going to tell the uh, application to position this image somehow that it will always fit the uh, the element. I'm going to show you if we go with the bigger screen, now it fits. If we go with the smaller screen, now it fits as well. If we go with the gigantic iPad, it still fits, but you're going to need a special image for that because as you can see, it gets stretched because the screen is a little bit too big. But anyways, it's going to be okay for most of the screens. Now in here, you're not going to select scale to fit, you're going to select aspect, aspect fit, which will make it a little bit sharper. Okay, so we have this, but we want a couple of buttons in this application, right? So I'm going to have a button that, uh, of course, every interface has to have a button for some user interaction with the application, but as you can see, the button itself sucks. This is what Apple gives you as a button, and of course, it doesn't fit with the theme at all. 
this is where Photoshop comes into play again. So I'm going to make another project in Photoshop. Uh, in fact, I'm going to use this old image, that's why I didn't close it. And I'm going to go with this um, around corners rectangular thing in here. And I'm going to make sure it's white. Then I'm going to make a new layer in here. And we're going to draw where we want the button to go. So I would like it to go something like here following the aspect of my uh, previous application, Miriam, that I'm going to have right now on the screen. That design is completely made by me. As you can see, we've drawn the rectangular thing. So I'm going to go to Opacity and I'm going to adjust it a little bit, just like that. You can see that would be a very great button, but how we export it to Xcode? Xcode only has text buttons. It's pretty simple. Let me show you. At first, we're going to uh, put it in place. And then we're going to crop it. I'm going to crop a bigger chunk around it, like this, to make sure I get the edges, and then I'm going to press crop. You can see we have it, but we also have a part of the um, image. Now we do not have that anymore, and we can actually fiddle with this to take less of the transparent uh, thing. I think it would be okay to actually leave the uh, image in place while you do that. Yes, it's perfect. Now we can save this um, button and you're going to have a pretty cool looking button. Uh, button in here. We're going to save this one as uh, PNG, although GPAG is going to be better. But anyways, I'm going to save it as PNG file. It's a little bit smaller and takes less. Okay. I'm not going to save that and I'm going to go back into the Xcode and as any image, you need to put it in the assets folder before you can use it. To do that, of course, I'm going to take it from whatever it was created and I have no idea where it was created to be brutally honest with you. Um, okay, so it appears on the screen for some reason. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm going to go back in here, put it in place and as you can see, it creates its new uh, field, put it in the 2x and 3x as well for the retina displays and go to the main storyboard. Let me show you how you customize that ugly looking button. At first, name it somehow. I'm going to name it, um, let me name it somehow, start VPN protection. I'm going to make some kind of VPN application and whatever. You're going to go ahead here, click the button, go to button here, system, and make it custom. It's going to make it white and ugly, of course. Uh, the text is going to be some kind of shade of gray. You can select the text as you want. You can select the font in here by clicking this um, icon. But I'm going to go to uh, background in here and select button. Now I'm going to resize it as I need. Of course, it's going to be something like this. I'm going to go for a bigger button this time, but of course the design uh, preferences will ver vary from different users. And we're going to drag it to the side. This is my personal preference. You can do it however you want, by the way. And uh, yeah, it's going to be something like this. I don't know if it's evenly uh, stretched. Okay, now it is. And I'm going to make this font a little bit bigger. As you can see, we already have a very good looking interface. The next thing I want to do is to add an uh, information related icon. So what I'm going to do is to add a new button. I'm going to add it here to the uh, side. And this one is going to give us the information about the application. So we're going to select from system info light. Now, um, Xcode has a very good um, system for buttons. It can give you this kind of buttons uh, automatically without having you to create them separately, but we need to resize this a little bit or to position it a little bit up on here. Let me try to do this. In order to play with the location of the uh, object itself, you go to this ruler icon and of course you play with this. I'm going to go to 4 and here I'm going to have probably 44 or 43. Let me go ahead for that. Okay, as you can see, it looks pretty uh, decent. I'm going to get one more from here or two. It's going to be 41. Okay, and as you can see, it was aligned pretty well. You can leave it blue, but I'm going to make it white so that it aligns with the, uh, the other buttons. To do that, I'm going to go down below in here and you're going to have the uh, tint. And you're going to select uh, white 
and it's going to be white. So that button will, of course, when you press it, is going to redirect to another uh, view or controller that you can add easily. To do that, you go ahead in here, select uh, view controller, and you can create a new one. And in order to make that button to go to this new uh, view controller, you're going to press it, press the uh, right click and go in here, drag the line in here and say show. Let's open this application and see how it looks like because the video is getting a little bit uh, too long and yeah, I don't want to get you bored. We're going to have one more, we're going to continue later. Let's open the uh, simulator. Uh, jump cut. I just wanted to add something more to this thing. It's going to open this. In this I'm going to actually add a uh, label just to make something to happen when we open it. Uh, okay, I am open. Okay, and uh, if you click here on this arrow, you can go ahead in here and on the kind, select modal and select a kind of animation to it. I'm going to say page shit and I'm going to go for uh, partial curve. And then we're going to press this play button and open it in the emulator or the simulator. Be right back. So uh, this is a simulator that comes with iOS. It starts automatically when you uh, press that play button and you can resize it and play with it. For example, if I go ahead in here, device, I can um, select anything, go to home and it will go to the home screen. I can open the application and you can see these buttons are pressable, but we cannot actually do anything because we didn't program them yet. That is going to remain for the next video. We can also make this top bar a white and that's, that is going to uh, to be for the next video as well. Uh, this is how it will look like for the moment on an iOS device, but um, I'm going to scale, scale it a little bit uh, bigger. As you can see, if it's scaled normally, it doesn't look uh, actually blurry. It looks pretty damn okay. So this is how it would look on your device. You can of course test it on your device as well. So this is actually it guys. I really hope you like this video and um, if you want me to make them uh, longer and to cover more info just tell me in the comment section down below. For the moment I only made it uh, 70 minutes because I don't want to get you bored. Till the next time I'm Geo Snow. Subscribe to stay updated and peace out.